Hey guys, Dr. Scott here. I finally have a chance to introduce myself and say welcome to the class, even though I'm a little bit late. Uh, first of all, apologies for being sick last week. I didn't finally get my voice back until late Wednesday or Thursday, and then we had the thunderstorms and the tornado in Longview, which ripped my internet out this weekend. So I am formally introducing myself, saying hi. Hope you guys had a good weekend and that the class is going okay for you. Uh, a couple quick things before I discuss what's on deck for this week is I've had a couple questions about uh, some of the assignments. Let me clear up a couple things. I understand you guys are working uh, during the week and you have other classes and other obligations. Therefore, originally, uh, when Paul Rickert put this class together, he wanted things turned in at certain times. I'm all for you guys turning everything on on day seven or Sunday. And that gives you the weekend to get caught up and read up on the assignments Take your quiz, do what you need to do, but as long as I get everything by Sunday at midnight, we're fine. I'm not going to be checking the uh, mailbox and everything to make sure everything's uh, turned in on Wednesday, Thursday, day four or five, so hopefully that'll put your mind at ease. Second one was about the articles. Uh, I got a couple emails regarding the articles. What I'm looking for in those is when you're doing your article assignment is you need to be focusing on scholarly journals. Uh, one of the things that we have at the library is JSTOR, which is J-S-T-O-R, uh, and they're basically criminal justice uh, articles that have been what we call peer-reviewed, meaning that they've been read by other academics and approved and sent up the chain of uh, vetting and then published in a scholarly journal. Uh, try to stay off Wikipedia. Try to stay off you know sites that haven't really, they're just blogs, not really articles or intense research, and you should be fine. As usual, if you've got questions, uh, just give me a ho holler on the email or call me, and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. But for all intents and practical purposes, you all had a great first week. Things are good. I've enjoyed reading uh, your introductions on how you guys uh, came to be in this class. A lot of people have similar backgrounds in terms of what they want to do with criminal justice or psychology or social work. I think it's all remarkable. Uh, that you guys have chosen this path. I think you guys will find it uh, very rewarding. We even have a police chief in our group. Uh, chief, it was good to talk to you a little bit and, and get to see your uh, introduction. I hope uh, if I can be a resource in or outside the classroom, please feel free to call me at the Longview Police Department. Okay, <clears throat> so this week we've covered the basic introduction to the course, criminology, the study of crime. Uh, this week we're looking at the biological factors of crime, and forgive me, I'm got the book right here just to make sure I don't forget anything. But with the biologic theories of crime and causation, we're looking at the biological or physiological um, aspects of what these theorists at the time believed was causing crime, whether it was uh, biological makeup, uh, size and shape of the head, and they did cranial measurements and all that. They looked at some DNA markings and makeup. They look at all kinds of different things that cause the, the bi biological factors of crime. Now what you got to keep in mind in this particular uh, type of textbook is that everything in here is just theory based. It's not 100 percent accurate. Say for example one person might believe in biological, the other one might believe it's social or uh, social constraints. Another one might believe it's chemical or psychological which is discussed in the next chapter. So some key names here that you guys will be familiar with and it's in, mentioned in the book is you've got people like Charles Darwin, Richard Dugdale, uh, Arthur Estabrook, you've got uh, Franz Gall, uh, Herbert Goddard was huge, uh, Charles Goring was huge, um, I'm just looking at some, Cesar Lombroso, the biggest one, the biggest biological father we have in this chapter. Uh, and there's also different types of Caesars, don't get confused with Lombroso and Caesar Beccaria, they're two entirely different people. You've got Terry Moffat, William Sheldon, and then of course uh, James Q. Wilson, who's like the father of policing, modern day policing. So as you read through this chapter, Try to separate some of the different theorists because, you know, what these guys are pretty much just showing you that at the time they looked at the time their, their theories were coming ab uh, about with uh, criminal justice, there were a lot of them that were looking like it, <clears throat> you know, the way someone was shaped or they were looking at like fertility in terms of uh, different types of fraternal twins and identical twins engaging in crime. We started looking at different body types. We had the endomorph and the ectomorph and the mesomorph. And they were trying to basically show that, you know, depending on the body size and shape of somebody or their composition, one one might, might be prone to uh, types of criminal behavior versus the other. Uh, we look at um, stuff as such as like the early positivism. 
All right, these were these biological approaches built on the evolutionary principles that crime was an evolution were the first uh, to apply scientific techniques uh, to the study of criminals, and that was really through the 1880s. You had uh, Franz Galls, uh, Spurzheim, Cesar Lombroso, Charles Buckman, uh, and Ernest Houghton, and they looked at the phrenology, which was the, again the head size. They looked at uh, people that were born criminals, or were, you know, basically what they call criminaloids, that they were automatically born to be criminals, and they would like look at people in jails and prisons and come up with these theories. A lot of them didn't hold water simply because back in the day they were arresting people who quote fit the profile of being a criminal uh, that were basically social outcasts, and therefore there would you know you would have nothing but those types of people in jail or prison when you're trying to trying to make a, a theory. After that, we had constitutional theories, and these were biological theories that explain criminality by reference to offenders, body types, inheritance, genetics. You start seeing some of the DNA mapping going on there, and external ob observable physical characteristics. The body characteristics, I'm sorry, the body chemistry, they started looking at other things like blood sugar level, weather, climate, vitamins, food allergies, serotonin levels, uh, PMS ladies, uh, premenstrual syndrome, monamine oxidane inhibitors, MAIOIs, and really they were looking at these things that might have been, maybe these were the reasons people were committing crimes. We have the social biology, the altruism, tribalism, survival of the gene pool, survival of the fittest kind of mentality, Charles Darwin. And then we have the biopsychology, life course, persisteners, adolescence, limited offenders, meaning that people who didn't really evolve and they, they themselves had these predispositions to being criminals. So as you read through this, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm still getting my voice back from pneumonia. Um, there's a lot going on in this chapter, a lot of theorists. How I personally learned this section uh, was I would just write out their name, definition, what they did, and kind of put things in outline form to help me remember who did what and who. Uh, there's a lot of good uh, terminology in here. You know, like, of course, they define testosterone because that was a big deal. They look at uh, different types of criminal families and breakdowns of that, the different types of zygotes when they talk about the fertility tests and all that. So that's really chapter three in a nutshell. You just get the biological roots of it. It's really not too deep. Now chapter four switches gears. Now we look at the psychological. We start looking at the terms of sociopath and psychopath. Charles Manson, for example, your ser Jeffrey Dahmer, your serial killers. We're looking at what we call psychological theory. And it's a theory derived from the behavioral sciences that focused on the individual as the unit of analysis. Psychological theories place the locus of crime causation within the personality of the individual offender. This is where all your basic profiling shows are on, like uh, Criminal Minds, The First 48, all your NCIS, your Law and Order, stuff like that. That's where they mostly get a lot of their characters out of here. You start seeing the, 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 the beginnings of forensic psychology criminal psychology and forensic psychiatry. Uh, they differentiate between the psychopathology of the criminal, the makeup, whether they're sociopath and psychopath. A lot of people use those terms interchangeably, but they're actually disorders that have two entirely distinct different meanings. Uh, you get into Sigmund Freud, who basically brought the term the id, the ego, and superego into criminal justice, not just psychology. We look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs in here. We look at the psychotic offender, all right, and the links between frustration and aggression, which basically serve as a catalyst to committing serial killers or becoming psychopaths. Um, a lot of good stuff in here. What I like about this chapter is that it reads very easy. Uh, I haven't had much chance to discuss the book, but this book is really impressive. I, I have enjoyed it. Uh, it's kind of, you know, everything's just kind of up front in your face. There's not a whole lot of guesswork. Uh, Paul Ricker did a good job on this book. Uh, I think everything's just very self-explanatory and laid out. Um, I'm just trying to make sure I hit everything. We talk about the Durham Rule, uh, of course, for guilt. Guilt by mental insanity. They talk about that. The Bronner Rule in 1972. Get familiar with those. The McNaughton Rule is another one. Make sure we don't miss anything here. Uh, but really, you just if you're really into the criminal profiling, and most, most criminal justice students are at this point, uh, this would be the chapter to launch, you know, if you're going to get a forensic psychology or for, for, uh, criminal forensics uh, background in this, this would be a good place to start. You understand who does what, the different types of profiling, and, and kind of go from there. Um, a lot of movies have been spawned off of criminal profiling. They've got Silence of the Lambs. They've got 
uh, you know, all these serial based killer movies that you that people just flock to or try to get on Netflix or something like that. And a lot of these shows uh, and movies have been instrumental in, in launching criminal justice careers. Um, just I caution you that what you see on TV in the movies is not reality in law enforcement. Okay, so just keep in mind that whatever you're seeing and doing, remember that a lot of it's, you know, fluffed up for Hollywood purposes so they can, you know, sell movie tickets and keep the the uh, viewer engaged for an hour or two hours or whatever. So I'm trying to think of anything else we need to talk about this week. Um, as usual, everything's opened up. Occasionally there were glitches with uh, Blackboard, uh, you know, when they upload it or they do like an update or something like that. Some of my times will get re regressed back to what they were originally like a year or two ago. If that's the case, just send me an email. I can always reopen something. I can give you all a little more time to get something in if there's a glitch or something like that. Uh, I really want to see everyone here succeed and, and do real well. So you guys just relax a little bit. Enjoy the course. Like I said, I don't think we could have found a more user-friendly text to teach criminology. I'm really enjoying this book. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the opportunity to sit there and record lectures for hours and hours and hours um, simply because of space uh, and, and the fact that it takes forever to process. I will uh, periodically come in and I'll try to like uh, record over some of the um, PowerPoints uh, depending on size and all that and it's easier just to upload. So if you have any questions at all, if you need anything, give me a shout. I have the quiz laid out for you this week. You do get two attempts at that. I did fix that. Uh, that was brought to my attention over the weekend. Uh, your discussion boards, your uh, weekly posts for your devotionals are up, and the assignments are up. So as usual, if you need anything at all, just shoot me an email or give me a call, and I'll be more than happy to uh, touch base with you as soon as I can now that I'm not sick and I got my voice back. And I'll get you guys squared away. I will talk to you guys later in the week. I'll drop another video message in and uh, see how you guys are doing. And I'll be sure to post some stuff on the internet on the announcement board right after this video. You guys have a great week. Uh, be blessed. Stay safe. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.